everybody, it's Ryan here with our 65th mnemonic in internal medicine. I bring warm greetings in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're shifting gears, guys. We're heading into a different discipline altogether. Hematology, hello. And this is exciting times. Thank you once more to everybody who's been liking and sharing my videos. God bless you in abundance. Today, we're addressing the topic of neutropenia. And the mnemonic is panic with three eyes. So two red blood cells, we're talking to two platelets. And one red blood cell says... I heard you two finally tied the clot. The other said, coagulations. <laughs> <laughs> and what did one red blood cell say to another red blood cell that was having a bad day? He said, be positive. <laughs> so guys, just a quick scripture to encourage you this morning. You know, whenever you need guidance in any situation or circumstance, um, trust the Lord. Right? The promise in Psalm 32 verse 8, it says, God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. What a beautiful promise. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Look, it says, In all your ways acknowledge Him. He will make your path straight. What a beautiful promise. Okay, guys, just dig into this, right? What is neutropenia? The definition of neutropenia is a neutrophil count of below 1.5 times 10 to the 3 per microliter of blood. And... Um, Severe neutropenia, if the absolute neutrophil count is below 0.5 times to the 3 per microliter. So what causes neutropenia? There's a whole host of causes, as we can see. So, okay, post-infectious is common in the setting of overwhelming sepsis, right? Autoimmune etiologies, which can be drug-induced or due to the famous systemic lupus erythematosus. Now, if you look at the slick criteria for the diagnosis of SLE, cytopenias is indeed one of the criteria, and we'll cover this in the rheumatology section. But suffice to say that neutropenia can form part of that spectrum. Okay, neoplastic issues in the way of lymphoproliferative disorders. Uh, we also have minor dysplasia, leukemias, uh, bone marrow infiltration, and so forth. Infections in the setting of HIV and sepsis. Uh, insufficiency. So, if you have insufficient substrate to churn out or produce these neutrophils, you will have a situation of neutropenia, uh, the likes of B12 and folate deficiency, right? Uh, there's a whole host of iatrogenic causes in the way of drugs like chemotherapy, um trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, more affectionately termed Bectum, right? That's our go-to guy for PCP pneumonia, right? And it also uh, we use that to treat diarrhea and immunocompromised to cover you know, microsporidium and isospora belly and cyst isospora, etc. Um, Alrighty, right. So then synthetic penicillins, phenytoin, carbamazepine, so watch out for your anti-epileptics. Nonsteroidals, gold, now not commonly used, antidiabetic medications, phenothiazines, clozapine as well. And then consumption in the setting of hypersplenism. And the noticeable cause, a common cause of hypersplenism in our setting is patients who have portal hypertension with splenomegaly and they have hypersplenism. And that causes neutropenia on the basis of consumption of these neutrophils. It also causes thrombocytopenia as well. So bear that in mind. How, guys, how do we investigate neutropenia? So basic investigations would be a full blood count with a differential and a smear, right? So you want to make the diagnosis of neutropenia, check your renal function, check your liver function, and do a partial thromboplastin time and international normalized ratio as well. Special workup has to do with fibrinogen levels, lactate dehydrogenase, all right? Antinuclear factors, searching for lupus, and for substance deficiency, we mentioned B12 and folate levels. Uh, sometimes you need a bone marrow biopsy. How do we treat this? Neutropenia. So look for and see the underlying cause. Commonly in our clinical setting, it's sepsis. So you want to get your antibiotics on board. You want to do blood cultures and look for a cause. So you know your urine MCNS, sputum MCNS, um, pus swabs, lumbar puncture, and so forth. Right. Uh, and then there's a role for growth factors in some cases with the use of myeloid growth factors such as uh, granulocyte colony stimulating factor or GMCSF as appropriate. Now, guys, I just want to touch on the concept of febrile versus non-febrile neutropenia. So in the presence of fever, which is the temperature above 38.3 degrees Celsius or above 38 degrees Celsius, which is sustained for longer than an hour, in the setting of or in the context of a neutropenic patient, this is considered an emergency as overwhelming sepsis can develop quite quickly. Now, patients with febrile neutropenia require uh, early evaluation, initiation of antibiotics, and potentially hospitalization. 
Right? However, neutropenia alone without fever can usually be monitored on an outpatient basis. So it's important to make that distinction. Isolation in the latter is usually not required, although patients should avoid the following. Uh, number one, being in contact with persons who have active infections in our setting, especially COVID. Number two, consumption of uncooked meat and vegetables and unpasteurized dairy products. Number three, exposure to fresh flowers or plants. Then there's another entity called ethnic neutropenia. In this, the neutrophil counts in black patients are generally lower, right? So bear this in mind. The neutrophil count may be as low as 1.5 times 10 to 3 per microliter and may still be considered normal, all right? So guys, this is our first mnemonic in hematology. We're talking about neutropenia. The mnemonic was panic with three eyes. I hope this was a blessing to you. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll catch you again with another mnemonic soon. God bless you.